And tonight I'm just going to be speaking on the town portion of the projected surplus, and this is obviously due to um, final audit. Uh, the Board of Education, uh, once we get the final numbers from the auditors, I'll bring that forward also to the Town Council, Board of Finance, and I'm sure the Board, uh, Wendy, uh, will be here too to join me in uh, talking about that uh, with you at the Council. So the first thing is, how did we get and arrive at a surplus which is subject to final audit? So there's a revenue component to it and an expenditure component to budgets. So this year, revenues, I'm glad to say, were very strong. It shows our, resi our resiliency here in New Milford. Uh, it shows our grandless growth. Uh, shows growth in motor vehicles. Shows growth in personal property. Shows growth in our uh, grand list, commercial, and residential. So with property taxes, that's uh, the property taxes aren't up 17 million. They're up 1,788,755. Licenses and permits are up 194,000. 675. Intergovernmental is up 92,833. Charges for services, that'd be like conveyance fees and whatnot. That's up 556,979. Investment earnings, even though we had uh, 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 prior to uh, uh, the inflationary spike, we we're still managed to produce an additional 20,590 from our budgeted uh, numbers. And then in other revenues, which would be state funding that we got that we didn't think we would be getting, $612,772. That gave total revenue adjustment to the positive of $3,296,604. The next is the highlights on the expenditures. So we continue to watch our expenditures on a weekly basis. I meet with the department heads weekly and we go over our budgeted expenditures uh, approved a budget were 106 million two hundred ninety two thousand nine hundred and eighty eight dollars our actual cost this year actual expenditures were 103 million six hundred twenty five thousand eight hundred ninety one dollars that left a uh, for a better term cash flow differential of two million six hundred and sixty six sixty seven thousand one hundred and two dollars so total revenues over expenditures is five million nine hundred and thirty three thousand seven hundred and six a positive change to the fund balance meaning that this was added into our fund balance is eight hundred and fifty six thousand forty dollars so our town surplus that we're projecting and talking with our auditors has to be subject to the final audit is $5,077,666. Wow. Now, some of the highlights too. This is the second year in a row that we have not used waste management money. Prior to me being mayor, we were almost up to $1.3 million a year in using waste management funds. I'm proud to say it's the second year in a row We've used none to support the budget. We also this year increased, <laughs> increased our fund balance by $856,840. We have an extremely strong bond rating as we've talked about before. Our rates when we go to market are lower than AAA Fairfield County towns. And that's due to great financial stewardship by our town department heads our policies and procedures that have been put in place. So this is all very good news to our residents, our taxpayer, and our business community. So I say let's put this money to work. With inflation running at a current 8 to 12 percent in real world terms, not a bunch of garbage that they feed you on the, uh, on the news, purchasing capital items now, as we've done for the last five years, has saved us a ton of money. It will give us a better return on our investment than waiting as inflation eats away at our funds and increases capital costs and increases our municipal budget. So there's three phases to my proposal. Phase one would be town council approval. I'm requesting that of 
the surplus, three million two hundred eighty-eight thousand nine hundred eleven dollars of the 2021-2022 surplus be placed in the town capital reserve fund subject to final audit. Phase two, if approved, I will be asking for the following capital items to then be appropriated out of the town capital reserve subject to audit and there'll be a next set of slides for the requests. This will then also have to be approved by the Board of Finance and approved at a town meeting. So meeting with our department heads, I'd ask them what are their basic needs when it comes to our capital requests or capital items. And these are items that we would normally may have to put in the budget, which then would increase our cost to our taxpayer. Why would we double dip if we have the ability to do this as we've done in all the years prior? Why wouldn't we do this? So let's start with public works. I'd ask uh, Mike Boucher and Jack Healy, and they are here tonight. So if you have any, Chuck, if you have any questions concerning these, they'd be glad to answer them for you. So the first is a chip truck. Approximate cost, 125000 So Mike, I'm just going to ask you, why do we need a chip truck? Right now we're using an old dump truck with a wooden box on it and the dump truck probably shouldn't be out every day but we need to use it every day. Um, the capacity of the dump truck body is a lot less than we could get if we actually bought it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the capacity of what we use is only about seven or eight yards worth of chips. A truck like that would allow us you know, 15 yards of chips. Um, it's just for what we do with it, it's the right thing to do. And what about the chipper? Uh, we have a chipper now that they use every day. We have a backup chipper that has been there. I've been there 22 years, and it's probably been with us 21 years. So it needs to be replaced at this point. Um, with the larger storms we're getting, the more you know, the bigger amounts of damage we see, we can use the second chipper. And Mike, with the uh, with the blessing of the town council, all right, and the board of finance, and at a town meeting, you know, we really we purchased a. Uh, Tree, we purchased a uh, bucket tree truck. truck, bucket truck, right? Right. So, as we have the largest tree canopy in the whole state of Connecticut, we have a lot of uh, emerald ash that needs to get taken down. So, by us actually working uh, as a DPW with our own tree crew in tandem with our third party vendor, right, that we go out to bid with, how successful has that been in us being able to do storm? storm proactively cutting down trees so that our power doesn't go out, as well as trying to attack the ash. Right. How, how's that? Oh, I'm how's sorry. That? sorry. <laughs> how's that? Let's, let's, just, let's <laughs> use last night as an example. We yeah. had some wind come through last night. Okay, two trees come down on, on, onto the roads. Um, a year ago, we probably would have had five or six, 13, who knows? Um, by taking out the amount of trees we've been taking out, I don't know if anybody notices the pile at Century Brass, but it's big. We get rid of it, it's big again real fast. Um, we've been very hitting very hard on, on like I say, the, the ashes. Uh, there's elm tree disease. There's a lot of dead trees in this town um, that are, you know, it, it, by taking them down, we've, we've made a huge dent in storm damages that, you know, Eversource doesn't have to come for or, you know, roads aren't blocked, that kind of thing. Thank you, Mike. And what about a grapple truck? So 250000 Right now we run a almost $400,000 piece of equipment with a grapple on it that goes 20 miles an hour all over town picking up wood. It's really not cost effective for one thing. Um, we're using a machine that's really not made to do that. And uh, I mean, again, that would make the process that much more streamlined. We'd get a whole lot more done that way. And here's a new thing, right? So a remote mower. So we have uh, a lot of different types of uh, elevations. We have it here at Youngsfield Road, right, right Youngsfield. Yep. We have it over here, right? Dan, have it over here at the uh, the park. Holt Meadows. The Holt Meadows. We also have the reservoir, reservoir property. right? Property, and we got to maintain it and moat, or we put six or eight people out with, right? With mm -hmm. weed whackers and try and weed whack. Right. So this remote mower can do that. <laughs> One person, right? One guy with a remote control, and he, he watches it mow. Yep. Okay. What about the tire balance machine for 10000 We have a pretty large fleet of vehicles here in town, and we do all our own repairs at this point. Um, 
Chuck knows probably better than anybody right now. They change the tires on his truck. He goes down the road like this. We have no way to balance. We'd have to pay somebody to do it every time. This just gets us out of that so that our own mechanics can complete the job in-house. And tools for mechanics? I, I, I wish I'd have brought the pictures to see what they're using. They're using tools that are 25 years old, some of them. The, the toolboxes are more rusty than they are metal at this point. It is, it's time for them to upgrade their tools. And then the DPW large trucks, for those that don't know, those are here in the audience, and those that are watching, and maybe some of our council members, those are the big trucks that plow our roads. Right. Right? Those are the big trucks that we use to move uh, drainage right. to do things during the non winter months, correct? And those, you guys put a lot of miles on those things, right? Absolutely. You do the great work that you do. So adding two more to our fleet, because we've done a great job with council approval or finance approval and town meetings. Plus we were able to use grant funding right. for two, taking some of the higher emissions ones off. This is gonna do what to the fleet by adding two? Well, more? it'll get rid of a couple of borderline trucks that need to go, they're, they're <coughs> past their age at this point. <coughs> Um, it'll make our fleet that much more safer, that much more efficient, uh, less downtime for trucks. The newer the fleet, the better we can react to things. Okay. And two of those, you can see they're pretty significant priced, 238569 And uh, that's current pricing, right, Mike? Correct. And uh, if we decide to hold off on that, we're probably going to see a pretty good escalation. Last pair of trucks, I believe, were in the 205 to 210 range. So... Yep. It goes up a lot each year. And just the building to get them. Right. Lead Correct. time. If we order these trucks tomorrow, we'll be lucky to see them by the end of next summer, maybe. Next. Oops. Then the Milford Police Department. Chief, Captain. So we have for you three patrol SUVs, and they are at $164,193. In today's dollars, you know, uh, if we don't act now, obviously price goes up, right? Correct. So if you can talk a little bit about Chief and Captain, the need for three patrol SUVs. Yes, I'd like to say that I wholeheartedly support this proposal. Uh, it's a need, not a want. Um, it's something that we need to do uh, as soon as possible. And this seems to be an excellent opportunity because we have just that, an excellent opportunity to obtain uh, these vehicles. And I'm going to let Captain Wilcox and speak on this. Sure, we've done a little bit of research. There's still a few uh, 2022 vehicles out there that are on state contract. The state contract expires this December. Prices are going to go up expected ten to $12,000 per vehicle. Uh, so if we can't act soon enough, we can expect within the next year to be paying you know roughly $12,000 more for each vehicle. So even if you put it out to a competitive bid, you're still looking at thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, of the three vehicles we would end up uh, retiring, each one of them has at least 110,000 miles on it, and that's today's miles, not, as uh, Mike said, uh, what they're going to be at next year by the time the vehicles actually show up. And those miles may not sound high, but if you think about a police patrol vehicle, they're running eight hours a day, or eight hours a shift, so the actual uh, miles, as opposed to the hours put on those engines, is an awful lot. So uh, the oldest police vehicle we're looking at to replace is actually 2011, and 11 years old for a police vehicle is, is quite old. Thank you, Chief. And also we have here, and we're also going to talk about this with the, the Milford Fire request too, our Incident Center Command, I'm putting Command Posts, and uh, those are, uh, actually I'd like to defer to a moment to Chief. Chief, what is a command? What? Command Incident Center, uh, how, how is that going to be important for, say, the fire that we had in high school? Uh, basically, it's, a, it's another hub for us, uh, another command center, so we can work out of. Uh, like, please, we're trying to set up a, another spot in our, our Waynesville fire station in case there's an issue up in town at the police station, say, say a tornado hits. They have another place to go, so that's how we, so we can work together. And these these are mobile pieces, right? So if you're at the center, you can you take it wherever you want. Yeah, take it wherever you want. Know logistically where your forces are, right? Exactly. And it's better that you have all have communication. all three departments have the same one. Plus, exactly. the police department all can communicate. Right. Better. Exactly. Thank you, Chief. 
So that's the, re the request for the police department. Uh, the New Milford fire, $50,000, and that's an inflation adjustment for future fire vehicles. So, G. Paris. <clears throat> so we have our capital fund that every year the town generously puts money into. Um, as in everything else that we've seen, we've experienced a hyperinflation in the equipment that we use. Okay, we have planned out five years for our apparatus purchases, and this year, you know, in the budget season, um, obviously we requested more, we got less. Uh, but in order to keep on track with the schedule that we have outlined uh, for our vehicles, uh, you know, we requested the additional sum to keep it so that we wouldn't go negative and have to postpone purchases. Thank you, Chief. Okay. And then, uh, Chief Kurt, the hydraulic spreader. So for those that don't know what that is. It's the Jaws of Life. Um, we have it on one of our older vehicles down at Lanesville. Uh, runs off a of hydraulic, and they have to be inspected every year. Um, this year, when we got it ex inspected, we were thinking three or four more years down the road that this tool would be good for. They told us this year, pretty much not going to be able to use it next year. So we want to use new, new technology. You don't have to get tested every year. What's called an e-tool. We're getting two tools for that, for that money. Um, one's a spreader and one's a cutter. So you can cut cars up fast and quick. You don't have the hydraulic lines, so we can go over the bank quick with them. Um, we have a set already up in our, up, up in one truck in Grove Street, and we'd like to outfit this truck um, before the hydraulics spreaders quit on us. So, we and Chief, those are, are much needed, especially if you're called the Route Seven. Uh, if there's some kind of high-speed traffic incident. Correct. Thank you, Chief. Um, and then we have the three command uh, incident centers we spoke of before, so that all three fire departments plus the Namilford Police Department can all be in unison uh, uh, when uh, it's needed, which hopefully it isn't, but we would be prepared for it. Next is uh, Park and Rec. Dan? Yes. So Park and Rec, uh, let's go over the final tractor lease for the tractor that you currently have. Okay. Yeah, that's a lease that we have our final payment that's due this year. And once we pay this, we will own, own this tractor um, for as long as we can keep it. And right now it's in great shape. We're going to plan to have it for a long time. So this is our final payment. Great. And the creation, uh, Laura came up with a wonderful opportunity. And by the way, the kayak program is COVID safe right. and you're out in the outdoors. Uh, she's talking about a creation of a kayak program. Yes. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, Laura's apologized that she couldn't be here tonight, but we reviewed it today together. Um, it would be the purchase of a, a trailer that would be able to move the kayaks and equipment around. It's would, ten, 10 kayaks. 10 right? kayaks, um, 10 pairs of paddles. Um, PFDs, and like I said, the trailer that we'd be able to tow to whatever site we wanted to go to. And I know, Dan, she's talking about training people how to do kayaks, and then also offering kayak tours Yes. Uh, up to Housatonic, uh, also in uh, Landemi, which would also be a great uh, expansion of our tourism that we have, that we're trying to do, create additional tourism, whether it be it's our hikes, our trails, our river walk, uh, kayaks, lend deming, it's just another thing in our toolkit. Okay. And the tennis court crack repair. Okay, um, our tennis courts are getting to the age where unfortunately there are asphalt tennis courts, which um, if anybody knows anything about asphalt, um, they d it does crack. And because of the climate that we have in New England, um, a lot of freeze and thaw, so it does crack. Um, so before it becomes a safety issue, we want to repair these cracks. Um, unfortunately, I'll probably I'll be coming back to you again in the future to do it again if it gets unsafe. Um, which in the future, I know we're going to be looking at a different style of tennis court, but that's in our future plans. And Dan, about a zero-turn mower. Okay. Um, 
as many of you know, we have 20 parks in town, plus we maintain all the town office buildings. Um, so we, we would like to uh, trade in an old front deck mower that we have and get a zero turn. Which they're much more efficient. Um, we can get a lot more work done with one of these machines. Three quarter ton pickup. Okay. Um, our current three quarter ton pickup is over 12 years old. Um, it has a plow on it and it's time for that to um, be replaced. The aeration machine, for those that don't know what an aeration machine is. Okay. Um, if anybody has a if you have a yard or turf that you are trying to maintain, um, what an aeration machine does is pulls plugs out of your turf so oxygen, water, and other nutrients can get down to the roots of the grass. This is actually a, um, an aerator. Um, so it actually, when the, the tines go into the, the subsoil, it actually shatters it and breaks it up so there's no more compaction. And then as you dry it, it actually puts seed down at the same time. So this is a huge time saver and um, will help our maintain grasses, especially like the town green that gets so much foot traffic. And um, as we can see, you know, over the years, the compaction, you see bare spots, you see unhealthy trees. So this will help combat that. Ice machine. Um, we're requesting an ice machine. Our ice machine that we've had for quite a few years, uh, it doesn't work anymore, it broke. Um, I had a mechanic come in that does that type of work, and he said it's not worth replacing. It's going to cost you more than that to replace the parts, and they recommended that we go for a new one. And this is used for all of our recreation programs. It's used a lot during summer camp, and also our maintainers have access to it if they need ice for their water jugs before they go out for the day. And then a multi-purpose vehicle. Um, we already have one now that Park and Rec uses for cleaning off the sidewalks on our town town uh, building here, also across the street. Right. But now we're adding new sidewalks. Right. So we're gonna have a bunch of sidewalks at Pettybone, right? Bunch of sidewalks at the high school, and they're town buildings that we have to take care of them, correct? Correct. So the need would be for another multi-purpose vehicle to do that, correct? And it does numerous things. We have one machine now that it does everything from brush hogging to blowing leaves uh, to mowing. Um, it puts, it has a re, uh, attachment on the back that we can put salt down after we plow. Um, so it is a wonderful machine. And Emmanuel Williamson, the park fence replacement. Okay, uh, we were contacted by the residents in Gaylordsville regarding an old fence that's been up between the park and two houses up there. And it, and it was an old wooden fence that I can't find any records of when it was installed. Um, it was well before my time. Um, so they have asked that that be replaced and removed and it is dilapidated and we'd like to remove that and install chain link fence, uh, a black vinyl, which looks nice. That's a safety issue for sure. The rack dump truck. Okay. Um, so rack body dump truck is used. We use it for plowing. Uh, we use it for hauling. And it's used every day for hauling our mowing machines all around New Milford. Um, Lead dimming, power washing, and staining of boat dock. Okay. Um, as you know, we have 83 boat slips on Lead Deming Park. Uh, and we sell out every year. We sell out every year. It's a huge revenue maker. Um, and we want to continue to maintain those so they're able to be used many years and people so people aren't getting slivers and other issues. So we'd like to have that power washed and restained. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to go uh, ask Donna to come up uh, for the ambulance. So Donna, for those that don't know, what is an AED? And why do, why do we need it? Since you asked. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> Lewis and Greatest, um, you will create the one Scott through the first um, surf, uh, surplus, the uh, of the funds. We got six of these, but I, after I got them, I realized that Milford Ambulance has a deep fib in the town hall, the library, and the senior center. And I checked my records, and they're all they're past their time. So I realized that something needed to be done. So I had asked the mayor if we could put in 
to get three of them. Um, it's really not for, um, it says three for the ambulance. What it would be is I would put them in those three town buildings. They're not directly for us. I've always maintained them. We bought the boxes that they're all in, so they just go to and walked off. And um, these are the greatest ones, the pads and the batteries. They're good for five years. They have a life expectancy of about 10 years, so it'd be good to go for a while. And like I said, it'd be in the three main buildings where we really need them. Thank you, Don. One in this building there. Pardon? One in this building. Tower? Yes, there's one downstairs right across from the mayor's office, and I always replace the batteries and the pads and stuff. These are also able to be hooked up through the Wi-Fi in the buildings, and they'll have a report back to us, so in case something were to go wrong, I immediately get a message. I don't have to constantly go over and check, make sure no one's fiddled with it or anything. So that's another great thing. Thanks. Sure. Thank you, John. Next is Senior Center, the flooring. So in our meetings, Jasmine and I have, Jasmine was talking a little bit about safety, our seniors, and the floor. Jasmine, can you talk a little bit about that? Good evening, everyone. Top pass on the community. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so at the Senior Center, the flooring that we are looking for um, is within our dining room and in our grand room. So though our grand room is new, what we've known, they've used the same type of flooring throughout the dining room and the grand room. Um, and this kind of flooring, unfortunately, it isn't the best for our seniors as they traverse through. Um, especially come winter time and when they are sand on the floor, it's the type of flooring that gets very sticky. Um, unfortunately, that is the space that we see frequent uh, traffic and also we see a lot of trips and falls. We call upon our ambulance crew a lot just for lift assists. And um, mm -hmm. if any, huh? Is it, I, we've been here for that. Yes. <laughs> um, and especially in our dining room, which that floor has not been touched for as long as I've been at the senior center. Uh, believe it or not, the design of it is, is also a safety concern. There are light and dark parts of the tile, which for um, and our older adult community does mess with the depth perception. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a space right in front of our fireplace, which believe it or not dips down um, as we have, and that's a frequent spot for our folks to decorate the mantle. And uh, we fear many times that there could be an accident waiting to happen. So thank you, Mayor. Thank that. you, Jasmine. Thank you. Okay, Mayor. Next this question, Katie. The flooring that exists in the, the most recently put up part of the building, on what do you call that? The dining The grand room. The grand room? Yes. That's what you're saying is not the type of flooring that should be in a senior environment? Uh, it's the type of flooring. So this is both the grand room and the dining room have the same type of material of flooring. Um, it's, it's shiny. It catches a lot of our, our folks' shoes, especially with, um, okay. with uh, assistive devices. It, it, it gets sticky. Gotcha. Um, so okay, I just they, never paid attention. I never, sorry, I'm too young to be paying attention. <laughs> Come by and walk around. Thank I just want to know if it was the same all the way through. That's uh, it mean. is different designs, different times, but um, this of the same material. Thank you. Uh, next is a youth agency. Jason uh, had uh, an issue, so that's why he left. Um, but with the uh, cameras, these are more updated cameras as we have a Litchfield transition in the Max. Right. We felt it was important to upgrade our camera systems there. So that's the 520862. Town hall window painting. I know Jack here if you'd like to address that now that we've done the standing seam roof. Uh, Jack, you want to talk a little bit about the painting of the windows? Yeah, the municipal building committee uh, was looking at the building out and did the, the roof and they noticed that the, the windows needed to be touched up and painted. Uh, we've gone out to get a price from a, a, a contractor. They provide us with a price to paint the exterior of the windows. Uh, for seventeen thousand five hundred forty-eight dollars, it's part of trying to keep a building up. We should be painting and maintaining the windows, and also periodically sealing the exterior brick. So this would be one part of that uh, upkeep. Thank you, Jack. And the roof, Mayor, you met, you skipped over the max roof. Oh, I'm sorry, the max roof, Jack. Uh, for needs needs a new roof. It needs. It's time to do a new roof. Uh, uh, constant. Dave Dave Martin, our facilities manager. He uh, has a records on all the roofs, looking at the age, and also he spends a lot of time on the roof. Um, that one is starting to show some age, particularly toward the root, the road side of the of the roof. We've got we've had a few leaks recently. He's been up there patching it. Uh, better to take a proactive measure before we start getting water infiltration into the building and cause more damage. Thank you, Jack. Next, New Milford High School. So we talked about a little, this a little bit beforehand. So uh, when Jack and I toured the building, along with uh, Matt Cunningham, 
this is just one of a few things that's going to need to get done to bring that uh, uh, building back up to where uh, we actually really want. Uh, so one of the main things we said that was very important uh, both to Prince, both to the principal uh, uh, and to us as you, this is such a beautiful building, is looking when you go to the gym, you look up on the, uh, the gymnasium mm -hmm. and there's blistering paint. Um, just not a good, a good, this is not good at all in both gyms. So I'd ask Jack to get the uh, uh, approximate cost. So for painting and scraping of both gyms is $150,698. The canopy and scraping that and painting that is $11,167. Is that about right, Jack? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. And now, Jack, what are some of the other things, because we're going to be talking about this with our Board of Education partners, what are going to be some of the other things that we're going to need to do as a town to just bring the high school up to where we want it to be? Well, we're working right now, you know, as, as we're going through the roof project, uh, we have gutter systems that we have to make sure we maintain. We have water coming over the edge of the gutters. Um, so as part of the project, we're actually having that clean right now, but there may have to be some modifications to the gutter systems. Also, the uh, the high school needs to be have the brick seal. I think I just said one of the things we should be doing is maintaining buildings. Is periodically you have to you have to seal the exterior of your brick buildings, otherwise you get water infiltration. We have a few spots in that building that we have found that, so we, we're looking. We've got a price for uh, having that performed. Over the next and Jack, year. can you tell the town council and those in the public and those that are watching tonight? What the mason, just the masonry uh, sealant will cost? Uh, I believe there that came to hold on, well over well over uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Can you repeat that again? Well over four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. So that's just one thing. You can do what? To do the sealant on the masonry was supposed to be done what every seven years, Jack. Yeah? It, it's probably about every 10 to 15 years. That's to do the caulking, you know, any, on any, any brick pointing that needs to be done, and then sealing the building so you don't get water infiltration. And that's based on a unit cost uh, from a, con a contractor who does this. And then, Jack, just because uh, we'll opine about this more uh, both in December and in January, but as we toured every school, because I did, right, and looked at all the capital requirements, because I did, okay? We are talking about substantial amounts of money. Am I correct? Yeah, you're, look, you're looking at uh, roofs on, on two of the schools that need to be, which are not included, you know, not doing, being done currently. Uh, we also, we have a company that we've, uh, since, um, Silver Petroselli, who has been approved to do uh, an analysis of both of those roofs. Um, many of the schools need um, boiler upkeeps, uh, either replacement or upkeeps. Uh, piping replacement, uh, probably should have some doors and windows replaced. Uh, the the do windows are old, uh, they need to be replaced. Uh, the exterior of the other buildings, I just did a high school building. All the other buildings probably should, should be in analyzed to see whether you're getting infiltration of moisture through the building. Uh, doors, the doors are, you know, there's there, a lot of cases, they're the original doors. They're out of skew. Uh, if you go there, you can look and you can see a gap between the doors uh, as you walk into the building. And I know Matt's been very instrumental in yes. assisting with us in, uh, you know, really trying to put together first time in uh, the history of the town where with the Board of Education and with the town partnering together, coming up with a true joint five and ten year capital plan so that we all know we all can, can better budget for all these expenditures because we know they're going to be extremely daunting. Uh, another thing too, just uh, I'm sure most council people know, but just for our audience, just for those watching on TV, all of the debt service of this, whether we're talking about the Sarah Noble roof, the New Milford High School roof, is all born on the town side. We pay for the principal and interest payments. Just so we're all aware of that. So we do partner with our Board of Education partners. We do work with them. And I think we have a very good relationship. Matter of fact, I talk with them weekly, minimum, and we're going to continue to do so. But it requires everybody trying to work together, especially through what's going to be daunting times moving ahead. And uh, thank you, Jack, for that. The next is the town portion of the Route 7 Canterbury Hill sidewalk project. So we got grant funding, right, Jack, for the 
sidewalks that'll be at Pettibone, sidewalks that are gonna come down Canterbury to make sure those kids are safe. Going across the high school, the separation of the sidewalks where Taco Bell was, right? So Jack, can you kind of give us an update uh, on where we are with that project? And then obviously the town has to have a match. Yeah, that's it. And that's our match. It's an 80-20 project. In other words, we pay 20%, the grant pays the other 80%. Uh, that amount has gone up like everything else recently. So we're being updated. There we have to update the amount of money that we're putting into the project. Uh, the sidewalks will start at Candle, uh, Candlewood Lake, nor uh, excuse me, south on Route 7, come uh, go north and we'll end up at Pettibone School. Um, it includes a couple of uh, Route 7 cross, crosswalks. Um, there are five foot wide si sidewalks. It's for connectivity. Uh, and I think the, one of the things that you know, we're looking at is trying to make it safer for people along Route 7. Um, so it will re involve relocating a couple of bus uh, stops, uh, putting a little, uh, putting a, a covers for them in those areas. Um, we just recently met out there to do the utility walkthrough with all the utilities. So they'll move some pole, they have to move poles and, and, and wires. Um, we are set so that the bids will go out uh, over the winter and we will start construction on those uh, starting uh, July 1st of, of the next budget season. Thank and you, it Jack. also includes going up toward Canterbury School. That's a very small portion. Yep. And that brings the kids down from Canterbury safely yep. instead of walking in the road down to the downtown where they patronize our wonderful shops and restaurants. Uh, next is the EV, char EV charging station project. So Jack, you and I have been in contact with uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, people that's working with Eversource to get us uh, some much needed uh, grant funding. So our portion of, what is it, a four station EV charging? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you talk a little bit about it. it's going to be at a uh, young uh, Patriots Way. Yeah, it's going to be on Patriots Way. Um, the, if you come in Patriots Way from Bridge Street, you come to that first island. You would go left, and it would be on the back side of, of that island. And I think actually, Mary, it's six stations. It's three poles, two stations off of each pole. Um, it would be. We are setting it up such that if you hook up to it, it's not free. You're going to pay for the electricity, but the town has to bear the price, a portion of the price, to install it. Uh, this is our portion of the installation, including wiring. We have a, we actually have electric service right to that area, so it's very convenient for us. We thought it was a good, spa good spot to start and put in our, our, well, it's not our first, but our, our next EV charging stations. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are coming with those cars, and, but we also felt that they should pay for electricity. Do we know Thanks, what the uh, rate was going to be from Eversource for the electricity? Is it stable? Funny you said that, Sal. Funny you said that. So right now, Eversource is currently at about 11 cents a kilowatt. Mm -hmm. They've now asked to go in January to 22 cents a kilowatt. Mm -hmm. That's now. <laughs> it could be double in two years from now. So, they're, well, it's going to be double now, Probably. which is going to put a lot of pressure on our residents. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll talk about more about that in December because I'm going to ask Ivana to come in and update the council on some, some of that stuff. So that's what we got uh, for EV charging stations. Next is additional payment pension of $100,000. The reason why I'm asking for that is it's speaking with uh, not only our pension uh, committee chairman, Mr. Pill, also our uh, pension consultants and our finance director. Uh, like everything else, uh, when it comes to investments, when it comes to uh, whether it be bonds or equities, uh, the pension's lost uh, between 20 and 30% of its value. So the prudent thing to do is to add into it with $100,000. There's going to be a significant increase in this next year's budget to uh, cover that shortfall. I'll have those projected numbers in January, but it will be significant. So that's gonna be another headwind facing uh, the town and the town council and uh, our public. The next is the creation of a town side personnel reserve for retirements and payouts. So uh, in speaking with our finance director, our workforce is getting older. And with that being is we have some wonderful employees that are pretty much getting ready to retire. In retirement, getting ready to retire, they have uh, certain cash outs, sick time, right Jack, bank time, and payouts. 
And we need to be prepared for that. Rather than having to come and take it out of a surplus or a contingency, you need to be prudently planning for that. So that's why I'm asking for $175,000. And that won't be in a capital reserve. Once that's done and approved, it will go on the balance sheet. Next is Park and Rec implementation of Cartograph software. So what does that mean? So right now, our DPW team, uh, Mike's Highway Department, works with Cartograph. It's a phenomenal system. And what that allows you to do is allows them to do a few things. First, they can go to the job. They'll have iPads like our public works team does. They'll take a picture of the job that's going to be done. When they're done at the end of the day, they take a picture get sent up. They also put in notes what they did for that day so that Dan, where's Dan? So there's Dan. And Mike does it now and Chuck, they can look and make sure that what was tasked to do that day was done. And they don't have to be driving all over the place. They can look at that in their office. Also, it adds up the costs of what the job would be, both material and in <coughs> personnel. Why is that important? Well, it's important for a few things. That way Mike and Chuck and Jack can see uh, what the costs are, how we can maybe do it a little better or a little worse, or we don't know. And also a big thing too is, God forbid we have another, we have another tropical storm or we have a hurricane. And our guys go out, do phenomenal job, unbelievable job, same with our first responders. But we need to keep track of our FEMA reimbursements. We need to keep track of all those costs. And rather than having the ladies do pen and paper, taking them weeks and weeks and weeks, they can just push a button. So we saw the success of Cartograph, and we're going to migrate that now software into our park and rec team. Next is town hall carpeting. All of us use the carpet as we go up and down the stairs here. We know that it's getting old. It's getting antiquated. Some of it on the back side, am I correct? Uh, Jack is starting to separate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's starting to have separation. Yep. So that then becomes a safety issue. So uh, getting the town hall new carpeting. The next is E Street inspection. So one of the things I'll be talking about in a few more minutes is that uh, the Board of Education is uh, just about almost done moving out of E Street School. They're going to be going to Sarah Noble School where their administrative staff will be. That's why you, you uh, appropriate the money today. So they're gonna turn it over to the town. What does that mean? Well, we need to figure out what, what's wrong with the building. What repairs need to get done to the building? How does it all look? We need to do a full inspection. Is there asbestos in there? Is there mold in there? What do we need to do? So I asked Jack if he could come up with the pricing so that as soon as the Board of Education turns over the the building to the town, we can do an inspection. Jack, could you talk a little bit more about the inspection, what that would be? Yeah, it would be a top to bottom inspection by um, Silver Petrocellium and Associates. Uh, I've talked to them. What I'd like to have them do is do a complete review of the heating system, um, the condition of, of the roof, condition of the, of the um, heating system throughout the school, window <coughs> systems, if we have water infiltration into the, uh, into the masonry. Um, code compliance to give us a general idea of what the condition of the building is, what it would take to bring this building up to code. You know, give us some a, a preliminary look at it. You know, it's going to it's going to be a snapshot, uh, but I can tell you right now that it's it's greatly needed. Uh, currently, the boiler in the school uh, in that building uh, is a steam boiler. It can't hold two psi. So, what does that mean? It means right now that we can't heat. That the Matt's working with it. He's, he's running the boiler every morning trying to heat the building. We're just trying to keep the mass warm enough so to keep the building from, from freezing. But it, right now, it need, that boiler cannot heat that building if we get into a prolonged cool, uh, cold spell. And Jack, that's water-based uh, boiler, correct? Uh, yeah, it's water-based with steam, yep. So uh, as I, uh, Katie, myself, just real quick, uh, spoke with uh, Wendy Fallenbach, Pete Helmus of the Board of Education, Superintendent, um, Patty Foote, Temporary Superintendent, Holly Hollander, who's the Assistant Superintendent, also um, Anthony, who is their but, our, uh, business manager, because we wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page as to when they will be able to turn it over. They asked that I send a letter, which I did to them to request them, now that they have moved, 
to turn it over to the town as soon as possible, to put it on the next Board of Education uh, agenda. And the reason being is with winter coming, the worst thing that we could do is have pipes burst at East Street School. Uh, so the goal is to um, have a conversation with the Board of Education and it's going to be up to them to decide when they're going to turn over the building to the town. Uh, but Wendy did ask that I do that I do send a letter and uh, and I'd ask to have that put on uh, their next uh, agenda so that we can all talk in about, you know, really doing it collaboratively uh, and making sure we do it in the most cost effective manner as well, especially we know with winter coming. Next is uh, Young's Field Crosswalk Intercession, the crosswalk lights and the signals. Jack, can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and I think the, the chief, I don't know, he's, he's been looking at the same thing I've been looking at. You heard that there's been a couple of deaths by people crossing streets. The mayor and I and, and Mike and, and Chuck all get emails uh, continuously asking us about crosswalks. How can we light them better? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of new technology out there with, uh, with the solar lights that we can put on the crosswalks to make it so they're illuminated when people go across. We've had a recent uh, request for a crosswalk signal at Youngsville Road and Bridge Street, that, that particular in intersection. I know Mike sent me an email today. He's gonna to talk with Eversource. I believe the light there is not functioning. We're gonna work on getting that. But we're, we're actually, I've asked Chuck and Mike to give me a program to slowly start to put these solar lights at intersections so that we can better illuminate them. I recently attended a DOT conference on this. It's a, it's a problem throughout the state the state has a, is, is engaging all of the public works departments to try to facilitate uh, improving crosswalks and moving people to right areas, um, get people to use the crosswalks and not go between the crosswalks. So this is our first our first look at it. Thank you, Jack. Next is we've done a lot the last few years. You can see all the capital that we're looking to do that instead of retaxing our public we're reappropriating the funding uh, thus you know saving the taxpayer future tax dollars also with the money uh, as I said before in the very beginning our property taxes the variance meaning the, the we collected one million seven hundred eighty eight thousand seven hundred fifty five dollars <coughs> difference this year in property taxes so my suggestion is that we take one million seven hundred eighty eight thousand seven hundred fifty five dollars of the surplus and use it for mill rate reduction stabilization as we all know we're going into hard economic times i think this would be a great way to properly use those funds to help buttress um, and stabilize our mill rate in the coming budgets I believe first time we'd ever done we'd ever do this in the Milford. So in closing for this, requesting to use two million seven hundred two thousand four hundred twenty three dollars and twenty four cents for capital requests out of the capital reserve fund, subject to audit and approvals. I then would be requesting one million seven hundred eighty eight thousand seven hundred fifty five dollars from the 2021-22 budget surplus to be used for tax mill rate stabilization reductions. That would be a total of $4,491,178.24 in totality. Uh, as you know that we actually have a higher number, but I wouldn't, I would suggest anything that's above and beyond that would then automatically be put into the capital reserve. But I didn't want to use all of it because we don't know the finality of uh, the audit. So that's why you have a little bit of the cushion. So uh, Councilwoman Francis, it would be two motions if the council so choose. The first one will be putting the 2.7 million into the capital reserve. The next would be taking the 1.788 million and that would be uh, put in for uh, tax mill rate stabilization reduction and to put in uh, uh, at the direction of the finance director because I don't know if he'd want to put that on the balance sheet or not. Mm -hmm. And then if approved, 
uh, putting the 2.7 million in for capital requests, I would request that we approve the capital items that are on the uh, slide deck that I just presented and in your packets uh, tonight. So moved. I didn't make the motion yet, Tom. You want to wait a minute? <laughs> uh, Mayor, I, I'm not sure that we have uh, all of the items. I only seem to have one page of should be a couple of pages in there. Yeah. Well, I've got a lot of pages with the yeah. prices and the purchase orders and the equipment. The list. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yes, yeah, should that? be in Thanks. there. Thanks. That's what I didn't have, the second page of the list. Not everything. <clears throat> okay. Do you all have that, Hillary? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's not everything that you just went through, but it's some things. No. 11D is on the first page, and then it ends up with ambulance, mm -hmm. chip mm -hmm. truck, and then ambulance. Okay. Yes. All right. So, Mayor, um, b before we... Before I make this, let me make sure I understand exactly. Sure. So we have 2.7 million, which would uh, cap go for capital reserve. Correct. Okay. And according to Greg, I want to make sure that this, if it's approved, that we do it properly. So it's got to go to capital reserve first. Mm -hmm. So it'd have to be one motion for that. to approve that amount for capital right. reserve. And then the second is the 1.788. And that million. would be right. And that would be budget surplus. To reduce and the tax be, mill rate be for mill rate stabilization reduction oh reduction and that would be and then that would be uh a, that would be appropriated to uh or or trying to remember would be the best thing the best verbiage for right it would be the verbiage to make sure that the finance director could place that uh, uh, on effective balance sheet that's going to stay on the balance sheet yeah, to stay on the balance sheet. Yeah, that okay. would be tax relief. Okay. Tax relief. Right, so it's, it, that's what I have. Is it, It's for the, I said tax, but you yep. said mill rate. Yeah. Mill rate, same yeah. thing. right, okay. All right, and those are the two. And then if approved at the council, right, then we have to make the, the following motion, which would be all of those capital items, and I could, could bring it back up. Yep, For all the capital items. Correct. Okay. Okay. Could you put so, the first page with your absolutely. map on sure. how we got here? Thanks. You want to start with the first one? Yeah, let me go back to the... Uh, Hillary, the, the... Where the money came from. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very first. That's not one... That's that's not $17 million. It's $1,788,755. Uh, that should be corrected so that... It will. We'll correct it. Yes. But other revenue, so what, is ARPA funding in here? No. ARPA funding has nothing to do not with this. Not part of your budget at all. Not nothing. Considered. Okay, well, thank yeah. you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we take 2.7 million and add to the capital reserve. What would you do with that note? Let me get over there. 2702423. Second. That's what I was looking for. 2702. 423. 423. $2,702,423. And move it. 24 to, cents. 24 cents. And move it to the Capital Reserve. From the. Second. From, from the 20, 21, 22 surplus subject correct. to audit. I'm writing it. All subject 2021 to 2022 uh, audit subject to that. Okay. Okay. There's a motion. And Tom, you second it? Oh, okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hillary? Um, why wouldn't you put everything back to the mill rate and put build this in the budget? Where then people can then look at it. you're double taxing the public. How is that double taxing? Them? Well, because right now you're using it with, not, with 20, 21 Mute, tax please. dollars. Tom. Partly and partly with the increase in fees. Excuse me, Mayor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, could you mute, mute yourself? Those on the phone, Doug, Tom. Mute. Partly with the increase. Not me. Doug. Doug. We can hear you, Doug. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Go ahead. Sorry, Hillary. Using these here. dollars today, right? Uh, I don't have. We'd have to, have to go back to the taxpayer and use the same amount of money for what we already have right now and then add on anywhere from 14 to 20 percent to it inflationary costs so why why would we do that because this is taxpayer money so basically we, we, we 
taxpayer, we were overtaxed, so it should go back, and, and then anything you're asking for for next year should be approved in the budget. Well, Hillary, right? we didn't overtax people. So let me explain how we didn't. Mm -hmm. So by using the $1.788,755, that's the differential in the taxes that we raised. So I'm asking for mill rate reduction, which brings that to zero. Where we get the additional money in the fees that we generated by our strong economy. So that is in our conveyance tax. That is in our building fees, permits, because we had strong growth. Mm -hmm. That is in our tax collection on motor vehicles. So all these things are strong economic things and we put that money to work. Rather than me going back to you and saying, okay, let's let that money fall to the unassigned and now I'm gonna tax you for it. So I'm double taxing you. I don't wanna do that. Does this go to a town vote, a town Absolutely. vote after mm -hmm. it's yep. here? It okay. will go to board finance. Because I think the public, yeah. 100% agree. Of okay. course. <laughs> Absolutely. And then goes to a town meeting. Absolutely. Are there any particular departments that contributed to the surplus by underspending, by a large amount? So underspending, we had underspending in general government. We had underspending in public works. We had underspending in uh, park and rec. And those are all underspending as they are looking at their costs and really honing in on those. We look at them every, every year. Some of it too is capital that we weren't able to spend, you know, due to shortages. It could be that too. So it's all about taking the dollars that we have today, repurposing them to get the infrastructure, the sorely capital as we've heard today from our department heads. I didn't make them up. This is coming right from the department heads and how we can do this capital, one-time capital, use the funds that we currently have, rather than going back to the taxpayers and charging them again. I found it. So the numbers that you got for the high school came from? The high school uh, scrape and right. paint. Mm -hmm. Jack, where did we get those numbers from? We sent out, we sent out a, a, a requested a proposal from a company to give us that estimate. Uh, included in it is protection for the floor uh, during the process. Um, so we requested that. We have a, a proposal from that company. So the Board of Ed didn't request this? It, no, they did not. They did not? Correct. Was the Board offered an opportunity to, to uh, ask for anything that they might need? Well, the Board of Ed, when we walked through the building, they had told us, Matt Cunningham too, this is much needed stuff. I'm like, what stuff do we need to get fixed? But at a so, Board of Ed meeting, they did not make their list of what Absolutely they needed. Absolutely not. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, I'm just okay. trying to understand how we can vote on the surplus so quickly without, you know, really talking through some of these numbers in, in deeper. I mean, I, that, I think that's what the budget's for, but I'm just having a hard time just seeing all of these numbers and, you know, saying, yeah, lo let's go for it. But, sure. I mean, we didn't have well, all of this ahead of time. Well, so I think we need we to be cognizant of, unfor unfortunately, the inflationary times that we're in, right. the shortages that we're in. And if we continue to avoid it, your, pri your prices right. are going to go up 15 20 percent. And is that really good to the taxpayer? We that we know that we're having escalated costs we have an opportunity to address these costs and we can do it in a compliant way. And we've done this for the last five years. Mm -hmm. And think about if we waited those times. Think about the millions of extra dollars that our taxpayers mm -hmm. would be spending on higher inflationary costs. So my asking the council to do this in this manner is to save the taxpayers money, to get much needed capital items mm -hmm. that the towns business needs to run we've already we seen the increases that you know in things where we couldn't do anything about it but also i'd say hillary is that it really you know this has got future discussion to be had because it is going out to the town yep. and <coughs> got to start absolutely so yeah. what you're basically saying is this long list would have been in the next budget proposal but you want to spend it now Absolutely. Okay. And you're going to see there's going to be way more than this that's going to come before you on much needed capital that's going to be needed, both on the educational side and the town side.
also additional yeah. pressures, also additional pressures of your operations, mm -hmm. whether it be health insurance costs, whether it be pension costs. So to me, if we have a chance to buy now, right, and not have the inflationary costs hit us even more, being able yeah. to help mitigate with a mill rate reduction plan, to all to me, seems like a big win-win-win for the town. But like I said, it's got to go to the, the Board of Finance and then to the public. And then the public can opine if they think this is the right way to use their taxpayer dollars. I personally think that it is. I think we need to strike while the engine, uh, when the iron's hot. Uh, we've got the money. Let's spend it now rather than two years or three years down the road. We don't have the money and we've got equipment that's all broke down. We'd be crying then. We've got the money now. Let's use it. Thank you, Paul. Tom Any has other? been trying to say something. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Tom. I, I want to thank you for bringing this forward. Number one, I want to thank the town and all the town departments and all the employees in town for looking at every dollar that they're spending while they're operating. Um, this is another responsible budget that has come in from this town uh, for five years in a row. Um, in my opinion, being this is going into my 14th budget season, this is a no-brainer. I've said that on only a couple of occasions in the last 14 years, but this is one of the no-brainers of no-brainers here. Um, inflation has spiked our economy. I don't think it's going to get better. I think it's going to get worse. Somebody who's lived through many of these, like you have, Mr. Mayor, and some others in the room, this is a wise way to use the surplus, and it is much needed. Some of the safety uh, issues here that we have in town with some of our trucks, with some of the amount of, uh, of trees that are falling at every single storm, every time the wind blows, we drive up and down these roads and see what's going on. Um, the defibrillators, I see a list of needs, not wants. And just to point out one little thing in the park and rec budget, that kayak program, they rent those kayaks nonstop up there at the beach. Those, those small uh, requests even from park and rec are gonna have a major impact across town. Maybe not as big as the chipper trucks and our plow trucks and our police vehicles, but every line item that I see here is a responsible way to spend this money. I'd like to move the question Okay, and get this thing voted on and move on. Thank you. Randy, if someone calls the question. Okay, call the question. Right. Right. right, before we do that, Tom, I just wanted to say something. Do you mind? Well, we Absolutely. Well, we have to make a motion. Well, who's going to make the motion to do that? He already did it. He called the question. Oh, he just said it? Oh. Okay. Vote I was listening. So to we have a. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so I vote. All those in favor of calling the question, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here we go. Aye. Question carries. Okay. So now, Randy. End the discussion. Aye. Now we yeah. vote on the. Vote on the question. Yep. So okay. we vote on the motion. Would you like me to read the motion again? Yes, please. So everyone right. understands the motion. So I'd like to move for <clears throat> uh, first item under 11D that we move $2,702,423.24 uh, from our surplus to capital reserve. This is from the 2021-2022 surplus, and this is subject to audit. Second. That, that was all seconded those, by Paul. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. Thank Stephanie, you. Stephanie, you got that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Katie? Second item under uh, 11D would be that I would move that we take $1,788,755 from our 2021-2022 budget surplus to be used for tax slash mill rate stabilization and reduction. Second. Any discussion? Oh, I can't because we call the question, right? I just a question. Right? Yep. Yeah, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, sorry. Did everybody prove that? Yes. Aye. Mary Tom and Doug, did you say aye? 
Hi. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Tom said hi. Thank you. Okay. Katie, did you want to do the, uh, I'll put them up here. Did you want to go line uh, by line? Jeez. God. Or? Um, really? Yeah. I don't know. Can you say? Okay. I, Randy, all right. But then, in order. As presented? Right. Okay. okay. That's what I'd like to okay. say is that I'd like to move that. But before I say that, I'm back up. I want to make sure that every council member has this list that's marked 11D and there are two pages plus is everything up there on here should be okay yeah we went from the side okay we started with chip truck and we went and we got chip ambulance truck. sits okay chipper chip truck all the way through to the sidewalks okay so i'd like to move that per the information in the hands of the council listing the surplus requests from the budget as presented. As presented, be approved. I'm, I'm moving to approve it. Second. To and approve the spending per this of as presented. Two million. Okay. Oh, sorry. Right. Of the two million seven hundred two thousand four hundred twenty-three dollars out of the capital and reserve and twenty-four cents out of the capital reserve to use for as spending presented. on these items as we have presented. Presented. And can you please put subject to audit? Yes, subject to audit, of course. Thank you. Second. And Tom, second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, two thousand seven. So every single, every item adds up to the two million. To the two million seven hundred two thousand four hundred twenty-three dollars. On this list that we received. And twenty-four for, cents. This adds up to two million. We're sure. Okay. Well, to I'm going to say it's going to be subject to subject audit to and audit subject anyway. to our calculators when we get mm -hmm. home. Or no, maybe not when we get home, but tomorrow morning. Okay. Any okay. other discussion? I, while I totally support the needs of all our departments, no question, no question. I'm disappointed that the Board of Ed was not asked about where their priorities were. And I think that more should have gone towards the Board of Ed because we are all one. I'll be voting no on this for that reason, but not because I don't support what our departments need. I absolutely support what our departments need. And just for the record, uh, Councilwoman, do you believe the town owns the school buildings? Of course. Town responsibility? Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad. I agree with you there. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We have a okay, I motion and a second. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Right. Who was the second? Stephanie? Tom, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay.